way brain, uh, the brain processes vision is very complex and in fact most of what we think of as a very objective sense of vision is very driven by a lot of different processing centers in the brain. For example, past experience plays a large role in how we perceive what we're seeing. One classic example is the corn sweet illusion, which is where uh, a physiological uh, optic scientist, corn sweet, um, has two equivalent gray fields with an edge between them. And the way he does the gradation from the edge to one side or the other changes how dark you perceive that gray field is. So he can take two equivalently dark si uh, sides and make them look lighter or darker depending on how he constructs the edge. So it's not the amount of light that's falling on the retina that creates your sense of darkness or lightness. It's the edge between two fields. Another, um, I think, even more fascinating example of this illusion that's not as well known is he gave his subjects a red square to look at that's in the middle of a green peripheral field. And what he did was he stabilized the edge of that red square on the retina so that it would start to fade from perception. And every observer of within a few seconds would see just one solid green color field in their, in their field of vision. So essentially, it doesn't matter what spectrum of light is hitting the cones in the retina because that's not where the vision is taking place. It's how the brain processes it that really drives how we see things. Um, and this can be seen in many different situations where in the public media, there'll be a video of some event. And depending on your cultural background, your prior experiences, and um, your expectations, you could interpret that event very differently than someone else who's looking at exactly the same thing. So what we think of as a very objective sense, the sense of vision, is in fact far from it. It's just as driven by perception as every other sense, maybe more so because so much more of the brain is involved in vision perception. This is a test of selective attention. Count how many times the players wearing white pass the basketball. How many passes did you count? The correct answer is 15 passes. But did you see the gorilla? This video is from research by Daniel Simons and Christopher Chabri and is copyrighted. It is available for use in talks, training, and teaching on DVDs from VizCog Productions. Learn more at theinvisiblegorilla.com. This is a very interesting example of precisely the brain's ability to ignore or to take in information it's cued to take in. Um, most people when they first view this video are so involved in the task at hand, counting the number of catches by a certain group, that they don't even notice something extrinsic coming into, the, into your view and trying to make you attend to it uh, because you are so involved in the task you've been cued to do. Uh, so this gorilla walks across your field of vision you don't see a, a gorilla amidst people every day, so it's a novel experience, but yet, despite its novelty, 
you don't even notice because you have been cued to concentrate on one aspect of that visual scene and you pretty much ignore every other aspect because of that cueing. When we are mindful about anything, any se sensation or perception we're having, what it does is it gives us permission to take our time in the perception and to think about not only what we're seeing, but what biases or uh, influences we may be bringing to that perception as well. Um, there's a great book by Daniel Kahneman, who's an, actually an economist, called Thinking Fast and Slow. And in it, he talks about two systems of perception, system one and system two. And system one is a very fast reacting uh, um, almost intuitive kind of thinking. And that system is very influenced by past experience because that makes processing much more efficient uh, and quick. But the problem is, because it's based largely on past experience and bias, it can make some glaring errors, like the errors we saw in, the, in your perception of the gorilla video where you didn't even see the gorilla come across the scene. Um, system two is more slow, where you, can, where you take your time and consider all the evidence, and not just that, but you think about what you're thinking. And that's really the essence of mindfulness for me, is thinking about what you're thinking, thinking about what you're perceiving, so that you take into account all the possibilities uh, including the possibility that your first reaction may be uh, not quite as accurate because it's reactive, it's intuitive, and it's influenced by biases. And so I think mindfulness really gives us permission to take in scenes that we're capturing with our eyes in a different way in a way where we use all of our brain processing to our advantage to get a more objective percept of what that visual scene is. Mm -hmm.